Hi, my name is Leon Roke, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex gold and S&P fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 15th of July. I hope you all had a great trading week and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, this content if you find it useful every week. So uh, getting really into uh, some trade updates and I didn't take any new trades uh, last week but uh, next week is setting up to uh, uh, for some really uh, nice uh, trading opportunities but um, in the trade update on the silver to euro um, trade update basically I've moved my stop up now from where we are uh, where, where I had originally entered one of the positions that I'd entered Back basically all the way up into uh, the uh, 2780 area and so uh, I've locked in profits on that prices have pulled back I'm just trading the stop higher um, as I do think that um, the uh, euro should weaken over uh, the coming uh, months against uh, silver so hopefully um, I don't try my stop too tight if I do don't worry it's not not to, nothing to worry about because I've already locked in some profits on that uh, the euro New Zealand on my uh, second position ended up being stopped out this was already a profitable trade I only had a uh, one uh, position open and uh, uh, this week we did have a move higher this was due to um, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand actually being a bit dovish on their uh, uh, with their bank statement. They're actually supposed to well, the market was expecting them to be a bit more hawkish, but they actually came out as quite dovish, which sent the um, the New Zealand dollar uh, uh, weaker against the euro. But I do think actually right now is a nice trading opportunity um, to look for some short trades still. So uh, there is that. Um, the New Zealand CAD trade update so managed to uh, get a one-to-one -one, only one position on this managed to get a one-to-one -one on that um, I took off 50% off the position so um, that ended up being a break-even trade as we came back down and uh, ended up being stopped out on that again due to the same dovishness um, uh, from the RBNZ so uh, my stop loss kind of just got clipped right there but um, I'm looking to get back involved in this trade if the um, Bank of Canada come out this week um, I think the inflation uh, data is out for both the New Zealand dollar as well as the Canadian dollar and so I'll see um, whether I can get back in, in in this depending on what the data says and the New Zealand Swiss so this ended up being a, a smaller win um, I trailed my stop up from this original move here, uh, entry there, to around here. And again, um, when we had uh, the RBNZ come out and a bit was a bit dovish, uh, so kind of surprised the market, um, basically stopped me out. But <clears throat> I pretty much had moved my stop up to above my entry. So um, that was a small win as well on the uh, New Zealand Swiss. So the only trade I'm actually in now is the uh, silver uh, euro trade and hopefully this moves to the upside if it does pull a, a, a rollover again this is already a profitable trade so no new trades last week but hopefully there are some decent setups this week so looking at the week ahead and this is from uh, tradingeconomics.com speeches by several fed officials including chair powell are highly anticipated economic data releases in the u.s will include retail sales industrial production export and import prices building permits and housing starts also attention will be paid to china's communist party's third millennium GDP growth rate, industrial production, retail sales, unemployment rate and fixed asset investments. Uh, inflation rates will be import, uh, reported for Canada, the UK, New Zealand and Japan while Australia and the UK will release their unemployment rates. Trade balance figures will be closely watched for the euro area, Japan and Switzerland. In Germany, the ZEW economic sentiment index will be released and in the UK, key data points will include GFK consumer confidence and retail sales. So 
for me, uh, what's really important is going to be the inflation data for Canada, Canada, the UK and New Zealand uh, and Japan, um, as that will really kind of determine whether those central banks will be uh, uh, holding rates or cutting rates um, at their next meeting. So let's see what happens there. So looking now at the uh, dollar index, the equally weighted dollar index is what I look at rather than the DXY or the USDX. And if you want to uh, watch a video on, on why I use the equally weighted uh, index and how to kind of put it on your uh, trading view chart on the top right hand side is a pop up and uh, uh, click on that video um, and I will explain in that video why I use the equally weighted dollar index. Now, the dollar um, did have some uh, news on uh, with inflation. So yeah, on the Friday, the dollar suffered its biggest daily loss in a month after US reported that inflation shrunk last month, cementing the likelihood of an interest rate cut at the Federal Reserve in September, money market pricing shows the odds of a September interest rate cut at the Fed are now priced as a near certainty after headline inflation fell to 3% year on year from 3.3%, undershooting expectations for 3.1%. The figures add to the body of evidence pointing towards a September rate cut following last week's softer than expected June jobs report and coming after Chair Powell's congressional testimony earlier this week in which Powell struck a more cautious tone, noting how the economy is no longer overheated and that the jobs market is fully back in balance, says Michael Brown, senior research strategist at Pepperstone. So, um, again, the inflation data really kind of solidifying that the Fed are likely to uh, cut rates in September. And if you go to the Fed Watch tool, um, you'll see that that is the case, right? So you'll see at the top right hand side the chances and the probability of, of an ease is now 96.2 percent um and the, the the probability of no change is 3.8 percent so um the market has priced in the uh the rate cuts already so um what does that mean for you uh and me my guess is that uh there, there shouldn't be really too much downside for the dollar so um there's only really 3.8% of, of, of investors that uh, think that there's going to be no change, right? And so uh, everyone else is pretty much on the short side. So in fact, when we look at the uh, the US dollar, uh, again, how far uh, can the move go? Normally, when you when you have moves that um, uh, are extending to the upside or to the downside is because the market is pricing in the move. But if the move has already been priced in, then how much downside do we really have on the dollar so i do think that um there is obviously some downside to come um uh, but i do think that also there you can look for actually uh, long opportunities um if you're brave enough uh, at the bottom of this uh, demand zone if not at the bottom of uh, this demand zone here and you're not necessarily looking to trade the uh, the dollar index but as prices come lower right on this dollar equally weighted dollar index then you would look for dollar buys on um some uh, pairs that you want to look for dollar buys on so uh, reasons to buy and reasons to sell um with the uh, us dollar so the dollar yen and the dollar yen um this week we did have um some intervention it hasn't been confirmed but it's likely and it says here from bloomberg that japan likely stepped into currency markets for a third time this year to prop up the yen soon after the u.s inflation data came out thursday according to a bloomberg analyst of central bank accounts. The scale of intervention was probably around 3.5 trillion yen based on a co um, comparison of Bank of Japan accounts and money broker forecasts. The figures indicate that Japan's currency authorities tried to take advantage of a buildup of expectations for a Fed reserve rate cut immediately after data showed the US inflation cooling broadly. So, um, the, the, the yen and the Bank of Japan are likely to have intervened at the same time as the US 
dollar um, and the Fed uh, basically uh, data showed that uh, inflation uh, came in lower, right? And so um, what we're seeing now is a uh, supply zone and the nearest real near, nearest demand zone is going to be down around this area here. Now, um, just because they intervene doesn't necessarily mean that I want to be a buyer of the yen. In fact, oh, sorry, a seller of, oh, I say buyer of the yen, but I, would, I don't want to sell the uh, dollar yen. Um, for me, I do think that there is some upside potential because I do think that the, uh, um, the, the difference between the interest rates, whereas you have um, the Bank of Japan is at 0.1%, right, in terms of interest rates, and the Federal Reserve is still at five point, I think it's five point five percent. And even though you know uh, the central bank, the Bank of Japan is is hiking rates, and the uh, the Federal Reserve are cutting rates, the question really is is why are uh, uh, investors going to you know put money into a lower yielding asset? Uh, from a very, quite a high yielding asset because the difference between the two is is still quite quite large so i don't think that the yen is still is an all-out buy just yet i think the closer they become then you start to maybe want to uh, look to buy the yen uh, but even then i wouldn't necessarily buy the yen against the dollar per se i'd probably buy it against something like the swiss franc but um I do think there are reasons to buy within this zone, um, but also as well, if you are looking for now short trades uh, on the dollar yen, you still have to kind of wait for a pullback anyway into the 61 area, six, um, 162 or 161 area um, on the dollar yen. But ultimately, I do think that <clears throat> there's still some upside potential to go on the US dollar, uh, the US uh, Swiss and prices have pulled back a bit, obviously, based on um, the inflation data. But again, I do think that the dollar is more of a buy than a sell uh, when it comes to the uh, Swiss franc against the Swiss franc. So um, uh, again, looking for potential buys within this area. But I think ultimately, the um, uh, the ultimate buy would be down at the 8840 area is where I would look for um, to establish some buys if it can get down there right because it might not but if it does then that's really where I'm looking to establish um, some buys but uh, there is a, um, a level here that is uh, uh, could be a potential buy as well this week the uh, US dollar cad and the dollar cad um is going to really movement's going to be determined by what happens with the uh, canadian inflation so uh canada's inflation is out this week and if it comes in lower than expected then it looks like the bank of canada uh, uh, are likely to cut rates this month which would then lead to the us dollar actually uh, strengthening the, the dollar pair strengthening um or the cad weakening and the dollar strengthening against the cad so um there is that as well if we do get a situation where um the inflation rate comes out and it comes in higher then in fact you're likely to see this type of uh, move happen where you get a bit more of a sell off on the Canadian dollar and the Canadian dollar will likely to appreciate. So um, it really does depend on what happens on the uh, on the 16th, which is going to be the Tuesday. So um, it's expected. It says previous was 2.9. So let's see what the uh, actual forecast come in as, as the market opens. Looking at the pound dollar and the pound has been rallying strongly. And this is partly based on um, some news that came out uh, with regards to uh, GDP. So we had the Bank of England. Uh, it says here the Bank of England may have a new conundrum as they look for signs that services inflation has cooled by enough to open the door 
to uh, to interest rate cuts. And he says uh, that gives the UK's Monetary Policy Committee an extra consideration as they decide whether to cut borrowing costs on the 1st of August. Traders see a 50-50 chance of a reduction, but the rate setters have remained wary about services inflation, which hasn't eased as quickly as the central bank expected. Uh, economists said the Bank of England uh, may have to ignore a temporary boost to prices caused by the uh, singers tour so this is basically talking about the um the uh, swift uh, taylor swift effect but there was uh, some data gdp that did come out and it said here that pound sterling rose after uk's gdp rose more than expected in may lessening the odds of an interest rate cut uh, in on august the 1st so that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing uh, basically uh, the market potentially price in um, uh, a uh, the fact that they may not cut rates in August, right? And so we're heading really to the highs of this uh, overall uh, auction or range, as uh, is commonly known. So um, we do have a supply zone here as well, right, which we're up into so this week again is going to be um uh important for the <clears throat> for the uh for the uk because you have um inflation forecasted at two percent but if that comes in lower then i do think that uh, the bank of england are likely to cut rates and there could be uh, that could start to sell off in fact so let's see what happens with the uh with the uh, uk of course if it comes in uh, higher than expected um you don't necessarily want to buy at highs unless that's obviously your strategy to buy at highs but um you really want to wait for some sort of pullback before looking at going long the uh pound yen so the pound yen um looking at really i think more pullbacks but again this week is going to be determined by what happens with um uh with the uk inflation and also as well you've got the uh the inflation rate for uh for japan which comes out on the 19th sorry the 18th which oh it says the 19th um yeah so that'll be early hours of of the morning of friday morning um uh, which is, yeah, in the UK time. So the previous um, is going to be 2.8. So if it comes in higher, then in fact, that puts pressure, I think, on the Bank of Japan to want to, um, you know, hike rates. But even then, even if they do hike rates, I don't think it's going to be enough to uh, to cause the pound yen to really start to sell off. Unless, of course, um, really it's about the, the 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 bank of england and whether they are going to cut rates rather than whether the bank of japan are looking to hike rates when it comes to movements on this pair uh euro dollar so the euro dollar has made higher highs and the euro it looks like the euro is strong but really it's more about the um the uh the fact that the dollar is uh is a bit weak at the moment and so we've pushed up to these highs now um for me europe um is still more of a sell and um it says here in this article it says the european central bank will take a measured approach to lowering interest rates as political upheaval opens up a litany of risks to inflation inflation's return to two percent according to a bloomberg survey of analysts after june's initial quarter point reduction respondents expect officials to take a time out when they meet next week so they're looking to hold rates um at the, at the next meeting uh cuts are expected to resume again in september coming once a quarter until the deposit rate reaches 2.5 percent a year later the gradual reversal of unprecedented monetary tightening reflects a rising difficulty in assessing the economic pitfalls ahead of a 20 nation eurozone inflation pressures remain strong and the recovery from months of stagnation may already be fizzling out um elections meanwhile especially across the atlantic are forcing investors to rethink everything from government spending to trade analysts now rank november's u.s presidential vote and the threat of another term for donald trump as the biggest danger to the region's economy while france's turmoil has stirred memories of europe's sovereign debt crisis last decade faced with such uncertainty 
officials led by President Christine Lagarde aren't pre-committing to a path for rates pledging to decide as data arrives. Uh, Chief Economist Philip Lane is among those saying July mainly provides an opportunity to take stock. Markets are even more circumspect on economists than economists, sorry, only fully pricing one more reduction in the deposit rate this year, though leaning towards another. There's simply no urgency to continue cutting rates at this current juncture, says Carsten Brzezinski, uh, Brez- I think that's how you pronounce it, ING's head of macro therefore the ecb will finally stick to its data dependency approach and will and should uh, refrain from giving any forward guidance so um the euro um for me uh, i think it's it's kind of um, appreciated a lot um considering um its uh, its economic situation and political situation so i do think that there is the potential for prices to move to the downside i think you know maybe one tens might be the, the the absolute limit of the move we do have obviously within that wide zone of of supply you do have areas of support and resistance so it's really trying to trade around those areas when looking at wide areas of uh, supply and demand. So that's these are the areas that I'd be looking to uh, take certain trades as well. So let's see what happens um, there. Of course, as well, you can uh, look towards, um, if you're looking for a bit more detail, go down to maybe something like the hourly time frame chart and look at some local uh, structures, support and resistance levels as well. So you do have something there as well as you have a nice little uh, level right here. So that's quite nice. So those are the areas that I'll be looking to trade around within that area of uh, wide area of supply. Um, and talking about the US as well, back to the US in terms of risk events, um, uh, Donald Trump, right, uh, uh, had an assassination attempt on him. Not too sure how that's going to um how the market is going to react to that when it comes to uh, the uh, the US uh, the US dollar. If it is a risk event, uh, the dollar could actually rally based on that. Uh, the talk is that um, you know Trump, um, because of the assassination attempt, um, uh, that that Trump now is pretty much a sure winner. Um, as uh, obviously um, uh, voters are going to come out in droves uh, to vote for for Donald Trump. So if that is the case, Trump is seen as actually positive for the dollar. So we could actually see prices start to move to the downside. But um, that would be it's definitely hard to tell uh, when it comes to um, risk events. Uh, but let's see if you see a gap down and it continues to kind of move to the downside. It's likely that that would be um, the reason why in terms of uh, dollar strengthening and the euro uh, weakening. Euro yen again pulled back based on intervention. Um, not really a pair that I'm interested in. But if you do like this and technically I do like it, it's nice. Um, that would be a nice buy trade at that demand zone, nice fresh area. Um, if you're looking for short trades and buying the Japanese yen, then you're looking for a pullback really back up to the highs right there. Uh, looking at the uh, British pound, uh, been looking to get involved in this, but um, the pound has just been uh, quite strong. Uh, so no, really no pullbacks, unfortunately. But there could be an opportunity to actually go long on this, really based on the um, uh, the Bank of England potentially an inflation looking to come in uh, if it comes in lower, and then the Bank of England look to hike rates or sorry, look to cut rates um, this uh, next month in in on August the first, and that could actually end up supporting weakening the pound and supporting the euro pound pair. So. There is an opportunity to go along, but that depends on whether you think um, or, you know, whether the uh, UK inflation does come in uh, higher or lower. But I think for now, the path of these resistance is to the upside or sorry, to the downside. So any pullbacks would be uh, to any kind of supply zones, I think, especially up into this zone. I think the 85 area, I think is going to be nice for a short trade. Uh, looking at the Aussie. Dollar and Aussie dollar, um, 
the guys in the group, in the private mentoring group, are uh, we've been long on the Australian dollar for quite a while now. Not necessarily against the US dollar, but um, ultimately they are really the last uh, uh, currency or central bank that are looking to uh, end up uh, uh, cutting rates in fact there's rumors that they could hike rates at their next meeting and that's you know why you're seeing prices move to the upside at the moment um so we're seeing definitely a bit of a divergence in the aussie dollar so the path of least resistance i think is definitely to more to the upside um, and any pullbacks down into a demand zone is going to be decent in fact probably demand zone starts from around there and i'll just draw it from there so any pullbacks into like the 65 uh, 6650 and maybe even even into the 66 round numbers i think that's going to be nice for a potential uh buy if you're looking to short the dollar as well gold making higher highs up until the uh, the all-time highs and that again is based on really uh us dollar weakness so now we're seeing in fact um that start to play out dollar weakness buying on gold potential risk event as well uh, could make gold uh, moves uh, uh, appreciate even more right so again uh, buying opportunities really on just on pullbacks down into areas of these uh, these demand zones especially around that uh, 2 three sixty area I do like that as an area where you've got uh, some support and resistance confluence uh, in that zone so that's quite nice got resistance there some support there and the s p so s p still grinding higher right again s p um and in and the indices grinding higher really based on interest rate uh cuts and potential interest rate cuts so um there is a bit of a demand zone a very small area of demand but i think the um any pullbacks into the five four eights are really where you want to start to look to potentially um get involved in uh in a in a trade you need a de definitely a decent pullback um so as long as the um as long as the uh, the federal reserve uh are cutting rates um uh, you should see some more upside potential, but also as well, if you are looking at any kind of downside um, trades, any short trades, um, that would be really kind of based on the fact that, again, the Fed have already pretty much, uh, well, the market has priced in the Fed um, Fed uh, cuts, right? Which then means that how much higher can the S&P really go? So there could be uh, a bit of a pullback, but then, you really haven't got anything to kind of refer it to, right? Because we're at all time highs. So, if anything, any pullbacks for me would be um, buying opportunities. But down into the one five four eighties would be the first area I would look to uh, buy. So, um, as they say, the trend is your friend. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. Um, hope you have a great trading week, and I'll speak to you all soon. Take care.